What's up, everybody? Justin Hayes here from superhumanpursuits.com. You are tuned into session six of the Functional Training Crash Course, or what I like to believe is a guide to just taking good care of yourself and training well. In this session, we're going to talk about strength. Finally, finally, we're here. And what we're looking at is if you have proficiency at breathing and you you move well, then strength needs to become the primary component of your training. And to start it off here, I wanted to explain something. I have a, a two-way directional area between functional strength and stability, and that's just to, to let you know, to give you an understanding that every exercise you do falls along the continuum of either there's more strength-oriented components to it or more stabilization oriented components and and I guess the easiest way to frame that up is think of a single leg exercise versus a bilateral two legged exercise if I squat on two legs well there's obviously stabilizing muscles and prime movers when I'm squatting on two legs but there's far less of a stabilization component as compared to a single leg squat if I were to pistol or split squat, there's going to be quite a bit more of a stabilization effort of my body in that pattern. On to power, speed, endurance, and hypertrophy. You see that I've drawn these bubbles off of functional strength, and this is something I often have to explain to people. People get far too ahead of themselves. It's a very common problem. You want to train for, for power or for endurance, or you want to build up massive amounts of muscle, but the fact is you have to have some base and strength. And let me give you another example here. If if I'm not strong in a basic bench press, right, a basic pushing pattern, if I'm not strong, then what's to say that I should be training in higher rep ranges that would be more associated with hypertrophy? If I'm not strong, if I can't squat or deadlift a proficient amount of weight, then why would I be doing powerful movements like a power clean or a snatch? Because if I can't control the basic hinge and squat motion uh, in just a loaded pattern, then why would I want to start moving that ballistically and quick with power? Same thing with speed, right? I don't want to be doing plyometric work if I don't have the same groundwork I spoke about before, if I don't have a decent deadlift or a decent squat. All right, on to balance training. If there's one thing I want you to take away from the video, it is this section. Your training should include these five patterns. All right, once you've established good movement in these patterns, once you're able to complete them uh, properly, with the right muscles doing the right work, then we need to start loading them up and they need to be included inside your your workouts, your program design. And they are push, pull, and these are both upper body patterns, right? An example of a push would be a push up or a bench press. An example of a pull would be a body weight row. And then we have hip dominant movements, which are also called hinging, and quad dominant movements, which are often referred to as squatting patterns and just general core work, and I've listed a couple examples here. But let's take this a little bit step a step further here. You can divide pushing and pulling into horizontal and vertical. And let me give you an example again. A horizontal pushing pattern would be a bench press, and a vertical pushing pattern would be a military press. Pulling, a bodyweight row would be horizontal. A pull-up would be vertical. In the same breath, you can also divide the hip dominant movements, hinging and, and quad and squat dominant, or squat dominant squat movements into unilateral and bilateral, meaning I could do a single leg hip movement, hip dominant movement, or a single leg quad dominant movement. And in turn, I could also do bilateral versions of these. And you can break your workout down into those more intricate components, but the most important thing to remember is that they need to include these patterns. Now let's take this a step further. In an ideal situation, your ratio of pushing to pulling movements should be equal. Now, what's an exception to this? An exception to this would be as if 
well, if you bench press significantly more than you pull a row, well, then you probably want to start to look to balance those things out. Does it have to be one-to-one? No. Oftentimes, most people will push more weight than they'll pull from an upper body perspective. But the idea is to keep those two in some semblance, some close related relationship and ratio. Now, same thing goes for the bottom two movements. If you hinge or deadlift would be an example of a hip hinging movement. If you deadlift significantly more than you squat, well, once again, let's start to balance those out. Maybe you need to include more hip or more quad dominant movements or more hip dominant movements based on what you need to balance that out. And now when you dig into core stuff, there's a number of different things you could do here, but really what you're thinking about here is is planks or side planks, something like this, ab rollout wheels, anything that is really directly core related work. That about sums up the functional strength portion of the map here. And you can see that I've drawn skill training a little bit below here as as the bottom rung. And what's that saying is really that once breathing's there, you're moving well, you're strong, and maybe you've developed elements of power, speed, then your training starts to leak over into skill related stuff. And I don't this could be an entire map in and of itself. But what this is saying is that the movements and the the areas you start to develop strength or power, speed, or endurance in start to more and more reflect the sport or activity that you're pursuing. That is it for the functional training crash course. I hope this information has been valuable to you in some way. Once again, if you have questions, justin at superhumanpursuits.com or comment on this video, comment on the site, I will be more than happy to get back to you. If this was valuable to you, if you did enjoy this, please feel free to share this on any social network you see fit. I would greatly appreciate it. That's it. Talk to you guys later.